In my village here in Ngatangi, uh, I'm worried about my uh, vulnerables. The energy on the island is definitely up. This virus has no respect for anybody. <laughs> More than a year after the Cook Islands closed its borders to the world, hope has arrived in the form of 300 tourists and the first batch of COVID-19 vaccine. The island nation has been spared the worst of the pandemic, making it this far without a single case. But all that could change in an instant. So how are you feeling after being the first in the country to receive your COVID-19 vaccine? Feel awesome. Yeah? Um, I went through the whole process. I never felt uh, the needle injection. If I have to compare with other injections that I've received in the past, this one, I, to be honest, I didn't no, notice a thing. Uh, the process, the directions by the nurses and the vaccinators, they were awesome. Feeling good now. Yeah. Alive. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I feel all right. Not too bad, to be honest. I thought it would be a bit weird after taking the shot, but it was pretty, pretty good, though. So you've heard about COVID-19, the vaccine, so you, you agree to get your vaccine? Yes. I was nervous at first, but then once they speak to you and tell you how the process goes, and then you'll just be sweet as. The country's vaccination program begins on the island of Rarotonga. The aim is to get the country's 10,000 eligible people vaccinated over an 80-day period. The number of people coming to get vaccinated grows day on day, exceeding expectations. Uh, when uh, COVID uh, came, so the life of the German population changed in some ways. So <clears throat> for us, I think today, uh, this week especially, has been uh, probably one of the greatest weeks that I have experienced in the ministry and in the history of the Cook Islands. But there are still some people that are unsure. Okay, what I have seen is after they have received their vaccine, uh, been administered, the moment they open the door of the van, see the expression, the happy expressions on their face, they yelling, shouting, and uh, talking and mingling with those who are waiting for their turn. What impact do you think COVID-19 could have on the country if it was to come here? It's, it's really going to affect a lot of people. The whole country will be affected. You know, food will be a problem. Yeah. There will be nobody to provide uh, for the families. I would say in the next three months, if there's no outbreak of any sort in New Zealand, we would do fine. If the numbers will start to climb up. Uh, as you, were, you, know, you know that it's winter in New Zealand, Everybody's been cold over there, and there's a snap uh, this week, I think. And uh, yeah, uh, hopefully, the our Kiwi cousins will look at Rarotonga as their uh, holiday destination and come down. I'm glad we have it, but I'm not that happy that it's not 30 days ago. Let's look at Australia, the, the bubble with Australia and New Zealand, or between the two countries. Uh, something went wrong somewhere, and then boom, it shut down. And um, that's what I'm scared of. We 
we could keep the doors open to a small, small, obviously small amount like everybody. But we couldn't have done that without the subsidy. Because, and the landlords letting us go rent free, all that kind of thing, we couldn't have done it. And I think everyone's probably in the same situation. Some were the other way and didn't get any help, which is a shame. Yeah, so without that, we, we would have had to close a long time ago. Yeah. And then we'd have to be having a completely different conversation right now. <laughs> you know? The net effect for us is that obviously we had to go and um, borrow substantially to stay afloat. Um, those borrowings need to be repaid. So we were in the vicinity of, um, off the top of my head, uh, close to $3 million in borrow additional borrowings, cash burn during that 14 month period. That's net of the help that we got from the government. Without the help that we got from the government, really what it meant, what it would have meant was that we, there was no way we could have kept all the staff that we did. My kids about a month ago got their second vaccine, so they're fully covered. And um, one of the things keeping them up at night was when is Dad going to get his? The security the vaccine could afford the Cook Islands has been welcomed with open arms by many. After a year of turmoil, they're cautious of the door being shut in their face, but are ready to turn a corner. There's this sense of relief. We're, we're blessed here in the Cook Islands. We're really fortunate. Couldn't have, couldn't have asked for better in terms of how it's all gone. We can allow, um, open the borders and allow others to come and enjoy the paradise that we have here.